In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at different types of discontinuities. Uh, discontinuities occur on functions. You can see them when you graph the function, and it's good to be able to identify the different types. All right, so in general, a discontinuity can be classified as either a removable or a non-removable. And then if you want to be even more specific than just saying, oh, it's a removable discontinuity, well, you could call it a whole because a whole is a removable discontinuity. Over here on non-removable, you've got two possibilities, two different things that could be going on in the graph that would make it a non-removable discontinuity. It could be a jump or it could be an infinite discontinuity. And so these would be more specific names that you could give a description to what's going on in the graph as opposed to just saying a non-removable discontinuity. All right, now I want to take a look at each of these individually here. Um, for the whole, a removable discontinuity is a whole, and in the graph it would look something like this. So maybe I had my removable discontinuity at x equals c, so the graph would come around here, and then there would be a hole in the graph, and then the graph would keep going. Okay, so basically that's what a hole looks like. It's definitely a discontinuity that can be repaired by filling in that single point. Okay, I could fill it in and make it continuous, so I know it's definitely a hole. Okay, so for the non-removable discontinuity that is a jump, again, that one's pretty straightforward. Let's say I have this jump and it's occurring at x equals c. What's going to happen is um, you might have part of a graph coming along here, maybe an open dot there, and then maybe something like this. Okay, this is a jump. Something to note here is that both the limits from the left and the right exist. So coming in from the left, my limit exists. Coming in from the right, my limit exists. However, those two limits are not equal to each other. So therefore, you have a non-removable discontinuity that is a jump. Now, for this infinite discontinuity, um, there's more cases. There's more scenarios to look at. So let's take a look at that third option here. So this third one is definitely a non-removable discontinuity, but it's the infinite discontinuity. Okay, spelling that all the way out there. Okay, now we've got um, some lots of information that have been getting, uh, given about this. Um, it can also be called an essential discontinuity. So it's also called essential discontinuity. So it depends on your textbook and what you're reading and what your professor um, uses more commonly, but that is another name for it. Um, and on an infinite discontinuity, you've got a couple scenarios that can occur. We'll go ahead and write them out here. You've got um, the left or right side limits are infinite or they do not exist. So that's going to be what's going to classify this and let you know it's an infinite discontinuity. Either the left or the right side limits are infinite or they don't exist. Okay, so some different scenarios that we can encounter here. Let's draw some sketches. Maybe on this first one, let's say my um, infinite discontinuity is a current going to occur at 2. I might have a graph that just simply comes and looks like this. All right, now this would qualify as an infinite discontinuity because um, my limit from the left here does exist, but there is no limit from the right. So my limit from the right does not exist. So therefore, I have an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. All right, so we've got an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. Two. All right, now another possible graph that you might see, and you could classify it as an infinite discontinuity. Um, again, let's do this at 2. Maybe, say I've got part of a graph coming in here, open dot there landing at 2, and then maybe there's a vertical asymptote that is occurring right there, so then maybe my graph does something like that. 
All right, coming in, my limit from the left is just an ordinary limit, but my limit coming from the right is infinite. So since I've got the right side is infinite, then that makes this an infinite discontinuity. And again, the way I've drawn the picture, this is an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. All right, now probably one of the most common ones would either be like say the graph of 1 over x or 1 over x squared. Okay, so like let's do the y equals 1 over x. Okay, as a rough sketch there, the graph of y equals 1 over x looks something like that. All right, this is an infinite discontinuity at, as well, but this is occurring at 0. The limit from the right is positive infinity. The limit from the left as x approaches 0 is negative infinity. All right, so both of them, one being infinity, one being positive infinity, that classifies this as an infinite discontinuity. This is an infinite discontinuity at x equals 0. All right, and then the other thing on this one that I might note, I have seen this called an infinite jump. There again, different textbooks and, and different authors are going to call things different names. But I have seen that one also called an infinite jump. Because technically the graph is jumping. I've got to draw this section, lift my pencil to come over here and draw this section. All right, so um, just kind of a breakdown of your different types of discontinuities. You've got two types, either removable or non-removable. But then if you want to be more specific, you want to describe what's going on in the graph more, then you can use terms like whole jump, infinite discontinuity. Definitely thanks for watching. Uh, be sure and share with your friends. Thanks.